Well, it's been a week in the Mazda CX-5 signature. What are my thoughts? How can I sum this car up? I've put a couple hundred miles on it. I love the power. I love the new engine. Um, the character and the delivery is actually kind of similar to the naturally aspirated unit, so it feels just as responsive, just as nice, just with more torque and more delivery, and that's a good thing. The con to that is that you don't get as much fuel economy because you're always in boost, because it's so much fun, and I've done 200 miles and I'm down to half a uh, quarter of a tank. So I'm going to be getting about 300 miles out of a tank, which means I'm probably going to be making a lot of visits to the gas station if I own one of these. Otherwise, though, looking on the outside, I love the way this thing looks. These new 19-inch wheels really do kind of fill in those wheel wells nicely, and they maintain a nice ride quality while giving you great handling, and it's just kind of a win-win. They look great, and they perform well, too. Overall, this is just a great, fun crossover. Um, I think, you know, some ways that it doesn't quite measure up to the competition is back seat room. It's usable and it's just fine back here, but it's it feels a little bit tight. And um, for adults, I mean, I have plenty of leg room here, it's okay, but there's just a little bit of a claustrophobic feeling. Uh, and maybe because it's so dark back here too, it's, it's just, I feel a little bit cramped. Uh, I do like this kind of, it's really hard to tell and see it. And it took me a couple days to notice it, but I do really like this subtle brown accent on the signature model. You could even get this little wood grain. Everything in this CX-5 looks and feels so premium, um, kind of well above its price point in some respects. And I really like that. It makes you feel like you've bought a quality item. Yeah. Ooh, it's cold. So, I do like the way this thing looks. Um, getting inside, this infotainment, I have a love-hate relationship with it. Uh, other reviewers have mentioned that it takes a really long time to start up, and that's true. Uh, it's like your cranky relative or friend that is just takes forever to get up in the morning and doesn't want to get out of bed. It really... Um, it needs some time to start up for, for the first time in the morning, and uh, after that, it's okay, unless if it's been sitting for a little bit. Apple CarPlay works well. Um, the jury's a little bit out on the scroll wheel. Uh, it's a little bit tedious to access all of these different buttons and everything throughout Apple CarPlay, throughout uh, the infotainment, because there are some pretty deep menus in here. Um, and it, tend to, it tends to get a little bit distracting while you're driving, but it's I think it's a pretty good solution. I, I like it better than a touchpad. And you don't have to, it solves the problem of having to put your hand up and touch something. Um, this screen is too far away to be able to do that. So you, it really only turns into a touch screen when you're stopped, which is actually, I think, is a, probably a good safety feature. Luckily, though, you do have a good radar guided cruise control system, but you don't have a very good lane keep assist in the CX-5. It really doesn't do anything to speak of. Um, and getting on that subject, these uh, the blind spot monitoring has been really irritating for me this week. So I actually turned off the beep. Uh, it's this issue where you've merged, you've driven past a car, it's an acceptable distance to merge back over, and it still says there's someone in your blind spot. Kind of funky, kind of weird, but it needs a little bit of adjustment. And while we're on it, <laughs> minuses, niggles, complaints... This reverse camera is almost useless. Uh, I don't know why Mazda makes the worst reverse cameras in the business, but they do. Um, you can't really tell how close you are to anything. It has a 360 camera, which is okay. Uh, the front camera looks like it's being filmed with a potato, and um, it's just really bad. I don't know why. I don't know why Mazda is doing this, but uh, hopefully it gets improved at some point. It's there. And uh, you can kind of tell if you're about to hit something. Like, let's let's look at these traffic cones, for example. Okay, so here's a here's a little parallel parking situation. I don't even know why these are here, but they are. All right, so we have we're putting it in reverse. We have a reverse camera. 
I'm not, I'm not going to do a very good parallel parking job here, but I don't know, maybe I will. We can kind of tell that it's right there, but let's look at the front. I mean, it works. It gets the job done. Um, but seeing anything and gauging distance of like vehicles that are coming in your blind spots or vehicles that are behind you or maybe even people, you don't really know how far away everything is. And it can be kind of a problem practically, I think. What isn't a problem practically though is the boost. <laughs> the way this thing drives makes up for all of those little niggles and little complaints. Um, if a crossover were fun, this would be it. And um, I think that still holds true after my week in it. I had definitely had this little honeymoon phase where I was just treating this thing like a sports car and it was delivering and it was making me happy. And then once I kind of settled down and started driving it normally like a regular human, um, I think it still delivers. It, it's, it's a nice driving experience. Uh, the ride quality is a little bit on the firmer side, but it's not terrible. And um, it does let you have a little bit of fun when you want to. It still does feel very front driven and um, really I think the only place you'll see this all wheel drive system be an advantage is in the snow and the rain and the slippery surfaces and uh, if you have proper tires you'll really be able to utilize that which I think is nice. Um, just a little added layer of security. I like that there's no stop start that's always turning off your engine. engine is great. There's just a lot of injector noise, I find, for some reason. Um, you just you hear it in the background almost constantly, uh, which is kind of funny because it's not really a common thing anymore with direct injected engines. The transmission, though, is amazing. It does exactly what you want it to. And look at that handling. Guys, this is, this is sports sedan quality handling around these corners. This thing can hustle. I always thought Mazda had a particular sense of humor about this crossover because they launched it at Laguna Seca, which I think is pretty awesome. And just a bunch of journalists did a track day in this car. Um, I don't know how the brakes held up, but I think it was pretty cool that that's how they launched this. And uh, it still holds true. This thing can hang. It's fun. I love the heads-up display. It's clear, it's sharp, it doesn't get in the way, um, and it gives you some really useful information, like if someone's in your blind spot, and then if someone's still in your blind spot, when they're not in your blind spot, it'll tell you that. Um, Radar guided cruise control is all super useful, the following distances, all the ergonomics here are fantastic. Um, I really do like, I like the way this car is laid out overall. I think everything makes sense. There's not a ton of buttons, and, um, I appreciate that you can operate this infotainment, even though it is a little bit tedious sometimes, you can operate it without taking your eyes too far off the road. Uh, so they've kept this screen high, they've kept it up near your sight line, and you can do all of your controls with this scroll knob, which is a little bit old school BMW iDrive, but that's okay, it works. I think it's, it's, a, it's a good solution to the problem, and uh, the more you get used to it, the better you get at scrolling around and selecting what you want. So that kind of sums up the infotainment for me. I don't know if there's ice up here, so I'm going to take it a little bit easy. I don't see any, or I think we're, I think we're in good shape. Oh, just so much mechanical grip. Nice steering feel. You can really gauge when you're at the limit. You know... I mentioned this before, this engine doesn't quite have as much power as I thought it would. I was just talking with a subscriber who bought a CX-5, and they said that this engine has kind of a diesel character to it, and that's very true, it's very torquey, it kind of lets you rev out uh, these lower RPMs, and it's funny because this car, 
kind of it shifts at 5,500. It never really goes up to red line. And I um, can't really test that at this speed, but let's get a little bit slower and we'll give you guys a little pull. But you never really get up to that 6,300 RPM red line. And uh, I'm kind of a little bit I'm curious why that is. Let's see here what this will do. If I slow down. Yeah, it shifts pretty low. It has plenty of power, plenty of torque. But it's just something I've noticed when driving this. Otherwise, let's let's kind of deviate from our usual test route here and take this on a bumpy road. There's a really bumpy one up this way. You guys can see what an amazing infrastructure Michigan and America has just based on this road. God, it's bad. We'll cut through here, avoid this light. Show you guys what it what it feels like over a speed bump. For being a little bit stiff, I think this ride quality is very acceptable. You could autocross your CX-5. This would be uh, you throw some Dreza. Z2 star specs on this, or Z3s now, you have a little bit of an autocross weapon. I don't know what class this would be in, but it would probably do pretty well. All right, worst road in Michigan, uh, at least one of the worst roads. Primary ride does a pretty good job soaking up the imperfections and the bumps and even big bumps are met with a pretty good amount of composure I think uh, yeah yeah this thing still rides just fine so that's the CX-5 kind of um you know, there's 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 some stuff to like about it. There's some stuff that's a little bit annoying and, and a little bit of a niggle. No car is perfect. I'm not really sure if the power difference is truly worth the extra cost. Um, it's really nice, and it makes this such a well-rounded package because now, oh, it has the power to go with the luxury and the feel. And you feel like you're in something way more expensive and uh, higher end than you're really paying for. So if you think about it in that respect, then this becomes pretty good value for money. Um, and of course, you know, these won't be new forever. They'll be used and then they'll be a really good bar bargain as well. So I think you kind of can't go wrong with this CX-5. It, it depends on what you need. The um, There's nothing really major here that's a deal breaker for me. Um, I like the size of it. It's compact. It'll fit in your garage easily. Uh, dimensions of it are nice. If you don't have tall family members who are six foot five and will be a little bit tight in the back seat, then the back seat won't be an issue. Uh, it's just not as roomy as the competition, let's say. But on its own, it's not bad. Does that sum it up? I think it does. I still can't tell what's brown and what's black in this interior. It's really playing with my with my eyes. Is this brown and is that black? And are these brown? Is that brown? I don't know. And I kind of like it because uh, it keeps you guessing. It keeps you on your toes. All right. CX-5. Thumbs up. Um, future autocross champion. Thank you, Mazda, for building fun cars. 
that your wife can drive. And to answer the question this week, is my fiance probably gonna buy a 6.5? I don't know. She's a little bit iffy about the infotainment and I don't blame her. She likes simple knobs and buttons, but we live in an age where knobs and buttons are a thing of the past. So I think, uh, I don't know, we'll have to see. Stay tuned. We've got some more crossovers coming in the coming weeks, but her Ford Edge is getting a little bit old in the tooth and it might be time for something new. RAV4 Hybrid might be a good way to go. 6.5 might be a good way to go. There's a lot to decide, a lot to think about. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. This is Loud here. We'll see you later.